Well, we're here at Cincy AI Week with Beverly Wright. Thank you for taking the time to share with us today. Just tell us a little bit about who you are and the company you're here representing. Yeah, um, I'm Beverly Wright with Wavicle Data Solutions. I'm their VP of Data Science and AI. Um, I also have a secondary job at University of Georgia where I'm in the executive education department running the data science standard programs. Okay, tell us about what motivates you. Oh gosh, well, I'm motivated by solving problems. I started in data science in 1991 and it has evolved so much in the past few decades. But one thing remains the same, it's always about solving problems. So making those discoveries through data is what really gets me going. Okay, was there ever a time that you felt like giving up and what kept you going? Um, there's never been a time I've wanted to give up. However, um, there are some times lately where I feel like the technology is not getting enough acceptance or credit um, in a way. Like the appreciation for what it took to build those systems seems to be getting lost on the new regime, if you will. So there's sort of a convergent and divergent nature of AI. Let me explain a little bit. From a convergent nature, we've got individuals like myself that were sort of raised in this area. I have three degrees that have to do with data science. And you evolve yourself into AI. So now that AI systems exist, you have an understanding of sort of what's under the hood. So if something goes wrong or based on however the results come back, you, you get it. You know the tinkerings that are going on underneath. But now we have a divergent nature of AI where people from the outside, you know, um, we can call them the natives. They were sort of born into it. They are able to leverage AI on almost in the same ways that the convergent people can. And uh, I guess they're more the immigrants, the natives are the convergent. Um, and so this new group of people that are experts in other areas, you know, maybe they're an expert in supply chain or marketing, they're able to leverage AI and get solid results and what I think frustrates me just a tad is that they don't know everything that it took for us to get to that point. You know, so I would love for people to have a better understanding of the history that went into it, not only for their own appreciation, but also because I think it would help them become better consumers of AI tools. Okay, what are some misconceptions people have about AI? There's a lot of hype around AI, and the biggest misconception I think that I see today among our communities and groups is that AI can just solve your problems without any sort of worrying about the data or worrying about you know fr framing the problem in a way that makes sense. Um, I think the push button mentality is a little bit overdone. So the hype that it can solve any problem without worrying about the quality of the data or the inputs or how to frame a real problem um, could be a challenge for sure. Okay, and what are some ways that AI falls short? Um, some of the ways that I think AI is falling short today is um, that it's, it's unfortunately kind of given the impression that I can take it over for you. You know, I got it from here, <laughs> so don't worry about it. And so I think it's misguiding people a little bit to um, don't hold my hand, I've got this under control. And so you see people that are getting results and just copying and pasting without thought. I wish that there was a way for AI to sort of make it clear that this is a, a tool. This is a tool and this is a resource for you, much like a calculator or some other technology. And what do you think the ideal way for that to come together, the human part of it, the technology tool part of it working together? Mm -hmm. The um, human-machine collaboration, which is a, a term that Tom Davenport, the father, widely considered the father of analytics, um, he coined that term, I think, initially. Uh, there are a lot of people that talk about the human-machine collaboration, like Andrew Ng and Sol Rashidi does quite a bit of talking about that as well. So all the greats are talking about <laughs> this very question of what's the right way to optimize a machine and the human collaborations. I'd say we don't really have a full answer yet, but I think what's important is that we, in our journey of learning to work with machines, we continuously pass down a knowledge set from human to human across the generations. 
My biggest fear is that when, that when we break that chain, if we break that chain, and we allow the machines to carry it forward without us moving that knowledge base, then we may not have any idea of what we're even operating. So as long as we can stay true to that, I think we'll be okay. And when do you feel the most human, even when you're working with these advanced tools? The most human I feel when working with advanced AI tools has to do with working with clients and other constituents and stakeholders, having those conversations, truly understanding what kind of problems that they're trying to solve and solutioning to help them get the answer. Okay. And how is your organization helping to develop kind of this human machine collaboration? Our organization helps develop the human-machine collaboration by working with clients and really meeting them where they are at that moment. Some clients are very far along in their journey. There are companies like Cardinal Health and there are pockets within Equifax that are very advanced. And they're running models, the AI models on a regular basis and they know exactly how to do that. And then there are other companies that are still trying to get their data together. They're still trying to figure out you know, the right use case. They're still trying to understand um, how do I make an impact? And the way that Wavicle tries to address both types of companies and different clients is to figure out where they are and how to move them forward. It's about moving them forward. It's not about where you are. Okay, and where do you see the next generation of AI and what it'll be able to do to help move people forward? The next gen of AI is a big question that is hard to answer, but I will tell you this. I think the communication in the past has been scraped. It's been, you know, maybe a long time ago we wrote on rocks. You know, we came up with ways to communicate with our hands or we wrote on rocks. Eventually we got to a keyboard or a typewriter and then a keyboard, and now we're into language. And I wonder if the next wave is going to be thought that whatever we're thinking, that we have a device that's implanted because technology has gotten closer and closer to our physical bodies over the decades. So I wonder if that's the next gen, is that our very own thoughts and even our emotions, not just our sentiment as it's shown on our face, but our actual emotions are signaled through AI. Wow, and what's your superhero trait? The thing that only you can do that AI could never replace? I care. I care and I'm curious. AI can um, copy human curiosity and it can query and query the way that a human would, but I'm actually curious. Um, one of my favorite bosses of all time, Sean Williams, he said that was my number one trait. It's just that my constant curiosity, but I also care. So this is kind of a throwback, but decades ago <laughs> when I was working on different data science projects and I had to build a model, um, I would have sticky notes, you know, making me aware, like, don't forget this project and that project. And I'd sort of line them up and have milestones set out because I usually had four or five that I was juggling at one time. And instead of talking about, you know, or writing the note about the project, it usually had the person's name. And that's because I wanted to help that person. I wanted to help them with their job. I wanted to help them make a discovery. I wanted to see them have that aha moment. And machines can never do that. They don't care. You know, I actually care. Hey, Beverly, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us here at Cincy AI Week. Thank you for having me.